Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. Today, we're going to be talking about MFJ ham sticks. Stay tuned. I'd like to say thank you to these guys. They're my newest members over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, please head over to patreon.com slash KMRD Radio Stuff. So my friends at MFJ sent me a couple of these. They sent me a 20 meter version and a 10 meter version. And uh, I've used these things before. They're, they're actually quite capable. Uh, very early in my portable days, uh, one of the ham sticks is what I used to to go uh, on top of an old abandoned car garage and do Michigan summits on the air. <laughs> and, uh, it got out. I was just doing QRP too. So it's basically just a long whip with a coil around it to make it electrically longer. And then you have this metal whip that slides in and out for tuning. There's just a couple screws here that will uh, tighten this thing down and that's how you can raise it or lower it to make it resonant. And if you have a mobile mount, you can simply screw it into that. Your car makes a great counterpoise and you can get on the air, do parks on the air, maybe summits on the air, drive down the road, portable, whatever, they're great. Or you could have some kind of ground mounted system. This is just, uh, this is actually a leg from one of the Wolf River Coils tripods that I ground into a point with my grinder and then I've got this mirror mount from MFJ that's got a 3 8 by 24 thread and a coax and then I just made up a little uh, counterpoise wire with some power poles of course. I think I've got about three 17 foot counterpoise wires going out there and you can run it as a vertical like this so you don't have to be mobile at all. Now the way you tune these you can see there's two screws right here and it comes with a supplied Allen wrench and you just loosen these up a little bit and this whip slides in and out except I'm having a problem so I've marked here with a sharpie uh, right there is about the most resonant I can get it and in the 20 meter band as a vertical ground mounted with the radials this is about as good as it's getting which if you're in the low portion, that's great, but I'm usually in the phone portion and that's not all that fantastic. Now on my car, it's actually a little bit lower. Uh, I'm pretty much at 1.0 SWR right there, but uh, I think I might know what the problem is. Now conventional antenna building wisdom would tell us that if something is too low, it's too long. So you would think by shortening it, by simply sliding the, the whip more into the body of the uh, fiberglass mast here, that it would raise our resonant frequency. Well, that's not happening. It's actually somehow lowering it down into the 13 megahertz spectrum uh, when I shorten it anymore. Uh, and then same thing if I raise it longer. So something's wonky here. And what I'm thinking is that this much of this wire is going in the center of this fiberglass mast. And I'm wondering if it's reacting with the wire that's inside here. So I'm actually gonna cut this. I think I'm gonna cut a few inches of this off and uh, see what that does. So let's do that. Now I am totally picking this length at random, but that's what we're gonna do. So that actually did something. Raised it up a little bit. Still not perfect, so I'm gonna probably hack off another inch or two we'll try it again so this is a lot better for me i'm not really looking for the lower part of the band right in the middle of the phone portion is kind of where i have this tuned and i can raise and lower this whip to tune it a little more uh, finely but that's looking pretty good right there so here you can see i cut off about five inches of this wire and not being one to leave well enough alone, I went ahead and cut two more inches off of the whip and got a little bit better result. So let's just take another sweep here and I'll show you. Getting up to the phone portion here, 1.3-ish. And then we top out at about 1.5, 1.6, depending on uh, how much it's shaking in the wind, honestly. But And just like that, we've been magically whisked away to Huntsville State Park. <laughs> so we're gonna try out the this antenna and see how far out we can get. I did shorten the whip a little bit more just by sliding it inside of the fiberglass mast here. 
Uh, at 14.225, I'm looking at about 1.3 to 1. And all the way at the top of the band at 14.350, I am looking at about 1.28 to 1, 54 ohms. So absolutely perfect. Can't really, uh, can't really ask for much more than that. Now, because I have this dialed in pretty much right where I want it, I don't want to lose that. So, a little trick we can do, get our friend the Sharpie, and I'm just going to mark right here, right on the top, where it's resonant. So anytime I move this or take it apart, I'm going to know if I put this whip right there, it's going to be good. Because there's a couple ways you can store this when you're done. So this part, unscrew. So this is actually two pieces. And you can just unscrew this. And you can see how much is coming out of the bottom there and just store it like that. Or you can use the attached Allen wrench and loosen these screws a little bit. And this whip should fit all the way inside here. So you can just collapse it like that, which is probably how I would prefer to store it. That way, it's just less things to get lost. And then when I'm gonna go out into the field again, I can just pull this up. You can see the black mark there. And I'm just gonna put that right where I marked it, tighten it back down, and Bob's your uncle. And I'll tell you what, these kinds of antennas are perfect for a day like this where you just wanna get out, you wanna get on the air. I'm not hiking through the woods today. It's kind of overcast. It's been raining the last few days. I just don't feel like hiking miles and miles into the woods. Uh, my buddy Don and 5 skt pretty much always uses ham sticks. When he's out doing parks on the air activations, he and I worked from, he lives around the Dallas area. When I was still in Michigan around Detroit, he and I worked, he was running five, uh, five or 10 watts on his Icon 705 and I was running the DX Commander and we worked each other. So I do know these things get out. So let's hop on the air and see what kind of noise we can make. Just logging with my phone using the Hammers app. See if we can scare up some business. In about a 1.3 SWR, running 90 watts, 14340. Kilo Bravo Zero, Echo Quebec Hotel. Kilo Bravo Zero, Echo Quebec Hotel. You're 5-5 here in Texas, park Kilo 3019. Copy the 55 North Dakota. Thanks for the contact. 73. Kilo Juliet 7, Bravo Juliet Sierra. Uh, Kilo Juliet 7, uh, Bravo Juliet Sierra. Got you about a 5 2 into Texas Park 3019. Roger, Roger. You're about a 4 by 2, 4 by 2 in the southwest Idaho, India Delta, QSL. Whiskey Echo 8, Mike Uniform Delta. Whiskey Echo 8, Mike Uniform Delta, QSL. Roger, Whiskey Echo 8, Mike Uniform, Delta, got you solid 5-5 five, five into Texas, park Kilo 3019. Whew, had to find a new frequency. A QRM out there. But we got it activated. Only took seven minutes, <laughs> so that's not too bad. Kilo Bravo 5, Kilo November, Park to Park, I believe I heard. You're about a 5-2 into Park Kilo 3019. You're about a 4-4 four, four into Park 0065, North Dakota. Whiskey Victor 1, Whiskey. Whiskey Victor 1, Whiskey. How are you, bud? Got you about a 4-4 about a four, four here in Texas. Hey, Mike, you just came up with us so I can hear you. Good to catch you on the air, buddy. Sounded like a 5-5 five five in Connecticut. Have fun. Is it Victor Alpha 3 Juliet Delta Golf? Roger the 5 8 into Ontario. You're about a 5 2 into Park Kilo 3019 in Texas. Hey, thanks for hunting. I appreciate it. 73. Hey, there's some DX. Kilo Oscar 4 Echo Zulu Golf. Kilo Oscar 4 Echo Zulu Golf. Got you about 5 5 into Texas. Roger the 56 North Carolina. Thanks, 73. Thanks. <laughs> Making one right now. Thanks. 
Whiskey Papa four Bravo Echo got you about a four four into part kilo three zero one nine in Texas. Roger the five by nine uh, Puerto Rico. Thanks for the thanks for the contact. I appreciate it. <laughs> chow chow seventy three QRZ kilo eight microbio Delta parks on the air. <laughs> That's awesome. We got Puerto Rico. We got Puerto freaking Rico on a ham stick. Oh, I mean, we got Canada too, but Puerto Rico's more exciting. That's awesome. So that was not a bad activation at all, if I do say so myself. We got 40 contacts. Two of those were twofers in park, so I guess technically 38, but whatever. 40 freaking contacts in uh, just over 30 minutes. Had to stop for a minute and uh, find a new frequency because the first one I got on, I was getting QRM'd all over the place, but uh, very omnidirectional too. We were getting uh, almost as many West Coast signals as we were East Coast signals. So that was kind of surprising. Usually I get a lot more East Coast. Um, I just think there's more hams on the East Coast, so I don't know, but uh, <laughs> these ham sticks work. They're stupid cheap too. They're anywhere, depending on uh, which one you get, anywhere from about 20 to $25 for this version. This is like the low power version, which is rated for up to 250 watts on sideband. There are uh, higher power versions, like 600 watts, I believe they're rated for, that I think go up to about $80 or so, but kind of interesting that we had to cut those seven inches off of the whip to get it resonant, but that doesn't really bother me. I'm into making antennas anyway, so I'd, I'd rather have it too long than too short. We made it work, and that's all that matters. So uh, this one for 20 meters is currently unavailable on the MFJ website as of the time of this recording. I think it's the 1620 is the model number, but just go to MFJ's website, type in hamstick, and there's all kinds of options there. So thank you, Richard, and everyone at MFJ for sending this to me. They also sent me a 10 meter version that uh, I'll try out whenever 10 meters is actually open. So <laughs> that's about all I got for today, kids. So I will say thank you for watching another episode of K8MRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.